What's up, guys? We are live <laughs> with the Bone Hawk Podcast. <laughs> I'm joined uh, by the boys. Haters here, as always. What's up, Hater? Hello. And as you already heard, Shiro. <laughs> What's up? We yeah, are. Uh, the best Bill O'Reilly impersonation to get the <laughs> night started. Absolutely. That's, that's what we live for around these parts. Yeah. Um, we do have an open King of the Hill going on PS4. The room is called uh, Bonehawk Podcast. I do have a little thing on, on the screen just saying I'm going to leave that up for a little while. I'm assuming it might fill up pretty quickly, but who knows. Um, anyways. Let's get chatting. Johnny Cage Combat Cast they did this week. What are your guys' impressions of Mr. Cage so far? Best fatality ever. Hell yeah. yeah the rest I of think the that's everybody's impression, right? Don't even, don't, the rest of the cast, they don't even need fatalities. There's no point. It's over. <laughs> it's <laughs> over. <This shit. laughs> Just give I up. Think he has the best for the kind of. It's got a lot of personality, right? It's the very best for what it is, but it's not my personal favorite, but there's no denying that it's just, it's something else. Yeah. Thanks very for the good. sub, Rex. Appreciate that. Already getting subscribers. Good old Rex. Um, what I actually didn't know about the fatality that it was like a callback to like MK1. I didn't yeah. even know that was a thing. I had to look that up afterwards to see it. Oh, hater. Thank you, man. <laughs> Reminder up. <laughs> your anniversary. Four months too. Thanks, Hater Man. You're a good friend. Aww. Well, thanks. Oh yeah, it's no problem. Go buy yourself a pack of cigarettes with that sub. <laughs> I think I think I already subbed to you like last month. I think yeah, you did. it hasn't uh, hasn't yeah, renewed it hasn't yet. Refreshed yet. Otherwise, I'd try to combo that. I'm sorry. It's all good. We're we're already up too, so. I I have to wait on the cooldown for that meter. <laughs> Rex. Oh fuck, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> what? What did I miss? <laughs> Rex in the chat. The chat. Oh man, he was uh, a little upset that you uh, <laughs> took away his oh, fire. Oh, I stole his thunder. Yeah, that's funny. Apparently, Dink is a Smash player. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Actually, I was thinking of buying a Switch um, sometime in the next little while. Just so I can play like MK11 on flights because I saw that they're releasing it for, for the Switch. It got the port got delayed. I read. Until oh, did it? Or something. Uh, I hope it doesn't get like MKX delayed, like PS3 and. Oh God. Uh, 360 did rip. <laughs> rip. Womp womp. I feel sorry for those people that pre-ordered that. Didn't that happen with the Vita version of the, the game uh, too? Was there a Vita version? Yeah, man. It had Tremor in it. Um, oh, Wait. sorry. That, I'm thinking of MK9. I did have Trevor. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm too old. I'm thinking of MK9. Shiro, you just got done saying MKX was on the 360 and the PS3. So. No, it was going to be. <laughs> they were originally planning on having Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, and then they yeah. then they delayed it and delayed it and delayed it, and then they eventually canceled it. I do remember that now, actually. Totally forgot that was it. Can you imagine how that game would look on freaking PS3 and Xbox? Ugh. Probably look like MK Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, freaking! I don't know. I get so salty looking at that MKX Mobile game. Just yeah. all the updates that they get and stuff, and all the stuff that's left behind in actual MKX. Mm -hmm. Always a big thing. Yeah. Anyways, back to Johnny Cage. Back um, to Johnny Cage. One of his favorite moves that he has that I just find hilarious is the. Uh, yeah. The, the Ninja Mime Perry. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I really enjoyed that. I can't remember. They don't really specify, do they, if it's like a gear move or not yet. Uh, uh, it's part of his core kit, I think. Oh, nice. I think, they, I think they showed it as part of his... His core set was his straight, so they changed his projectile, so it doesn't arc anymore. There's an ability that you can equip to turn it to an arc like it has been the last little while otherwise it's the mk1 flavor is what he has at default right his shadow kick his little shadow kick uppercut and i think the parry is also part of his default Pretty cool sure. i was i always was curious if they could find a way to kind of implement ninja mime into his moveset because that's just like such an iconic thing for him right hmm so and then of course he's got the uh, little sunglasses toss. <laughs> yeah, he looks like 
Is that an, that's an ability thing, I think, though, right? Because he that's just an has ability. his. I saw somebody, I think it was Mr. Aquaman, saying that it was their idea. It's like it's throwing, literally throwing shade at somebody. <laughs> that's funny. In there. Yeah. Clever. <laughs> Clever. No, oh, that's funny. And it, I but mean, the, I... the parry can be extended, right? You can amplify it and keep it going, keep it going. Someone's <clears> waiting <throat> to punish you. You can just amplify it and get him anyway. But like a lot of parries. Uh, lows will beat it. Lows and jump ins. Right, so you could just bait it and then just go with the low. Would the amplify version beat a low? I don't know. I, I think the amplify. I don't think they specified, but I think the amplify just extends it. Right. I mean that would make sense. It would it'd just be shitty to extend it and then have somebody still <laughs> hit you with a low, anyways. Right, and he's got the uh, that weird unique little move his little uppercut that's like a high and then after the first charge it turns into a mid and then after the mm. second charge it turns into an unblockable yeah mm, right it's totally not broken <laughs> before the game even comes out it's broken it's gonna add something it's probably gonna add something called mind games man he's gonna have like so they've already been pretty deliberate right he's not gonna be like a mixed machine or anything he doesn't his only overhead is just the overhead that everybody gets from the short hop yeah. So it's going right. to be all about pressure and all about a lot of people commenting on his uh, walk speed, not even just like his dashes, just walking out of block strings and baiting out punishes <laughs> mm -hmm. and then whiff punishing and, you know, things like that. I imagine that's how he'll play. I'm already feeling a little salty about playing against Johnny Cage. I've never really been a fan, so I don't have a lot of opinions about his new design. Right. Other than just kind of like with the masses, the general sentiment about how full of personality, how clever it is. Like, it's hard not to love the guy, right? Like, I've never really liked that sort of, like, archetype. That kind of, like, smart-ass comic relief sort of thing. Yeah. Johnny Bravo type character. <laughs> I know, like, for me, it really wasn't until MKX that I started really liking him. You know, I'm glad was... they got the same voice actor. Like, he is <laughs> our Johnny Cage. Right? Oh, totally. Like, and he fits, and he... He's such a good example of... So that fatality... The whole who hired this guy, what the fuck. So not, <laughs> just the animations. He looks so annoyed. The way they did the animations of this game are so good. But just like the voice acting in it, that is something that you're not going to get out of Ronda Rousey. Like if I was No, Sony definitely game, not. I would be pissed off. Like having to listen to that shit all day. She's perfectly average. It'll get by. I mean, she's a she's a billboard. She's like a built-in advertisement for the game. Mm -hmm. See that? Did you see that she came out in a pay-per-view dressed as Sonya Sure, Blade. which is exactly, I'm sure, yeah. was the plan all along, right? This is Buy the, the whole... game! Yeah. Right. It's, so, uh, I don't know about you guys, but, like, I, I can't, like, unsee celebrity voices. Like, if I have a celebrity, like, voice acting a character or something... Unless I don't know it's them, it's like it's all I think of when I hear the voice. It's really distracting yeah. for me. So I, I think if they can do like a really good job, but it's it's very difficult. And this is actually something that even goes in just like for regular voice actors. Like Steve Bloom sounds the same every fucking time. Um, right. You know, but another thing too is like I feel that if you're doing that, your celebrity voice needs to really like match it. You know, like. I'm just gonna take this for example. I don't know if y'all saw Moana, <laughs> but like The Rock, <laughs> and that was like really good, I think. Yeah. And and you have Ronda Rousey as Sonya, and it just she just sounds very dry. It's like so Billy West. If you don't know who that is, you know him as probably Fry from Futurama, yeah. as long with like all the other voices and stuff he did on that show and Ren and Stimpy and all that sort mm -hmm. of stuff. And he has like this very very strong opinions about voice acting in general, like how it's kind of taken for granted. Like you have regular actors that are being cast into like these Pixar movies and you know things like that. And it's like yeah. there's a difference in between acting on a stage and acting in a movie and then voice acting, where you're not acting with your your body or that presentation, right? Like voice acting is a very specific sort of thing, and not everybody can do it. It's almost like an insult to the profession that right. people just assume that they can or something. His no, opinion, I, not mine, yeah. but. Oh yeah, there's others who think that way. Um, in Guilty Gear, when the game first started off, so so like you know Ed Boon is the get over here voice for Scorpion. Right. Well, when Guilty Gear first started, you know it was a pretty small project. The creator, um, Daisuke Ishiwatari, he was the voice for Soul Bad Guy, for for the in-game sound effects. But then it wasn't until Guilty Gear, 
either Accent Core or Exert, he stepped down and they just started getting voice actors and a lot of people would ask him, you know, why do you do this? And so he just mentions how it was a very small project back then, they didn't have as much of a budget, but now that they can actually hire actors, he's just like, yeah, I just stepped down because honestly it's an insult to their craft for me to keep doing this shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not wrong. On that note, sort of, you know that Ed Boon holds the Guinness Book of World Records for the longest... Uh... The longest running voice actor in a video game because of his oh, wow. scorpion line. Even though he only just does that line, he wasn't yeah. as good as any of the story stuff or anything like that. He does the come here and get over here, and that's it. That's funny. I think I, I think I did see something about that, but well deserved, Mr. Boone. You keep rocking your single line. There's like a a short video somewhere of him. Uh, did they use the like same? Like at a panel, I mean, yeah. I mean, the voice. It gave me chills seeing him do that in real life. I was like, wow, that's like. Yeah. It's weird because it doesn't sound like him at all. It doesn't no, sound like, like if you, you, you ever heard him talk or talk to him, like yeah, it was just like totally like out of the blue. It looked for a bit like he just totally snapped on that panel. It was, like... was cool. <laughs> yeah, totally. Person. Um, so, what are your big takeaways for Cage? I know that you played Johnny Cage in MKX and stuff like that. Thing. Yeah, and you know a lot of Johnny Cage people. You're you know. Your buds with the competitor and Sweet Neptune and all the other Johnny Cages of the world. It seems I'm, the seems I'm, sediment is. I'm surrounded by Johnny Cage players these days. You can't get away from them. Um, he, I think <laughs> he looks he looks interesting. Like I don't know, a little bit more defensive than I thought that he would be. Like I expected him to be a little bit more. I mean, mind you, I don't have any idea of his frame bit or anything like that. But yeah. just I don't know. He just looks a little bit more like bait and punish than. You know, classic, um, rush you down relentlessly, Johnny Cage. That's like the way that Dizzy was playing him, like all the the amazing whiff punishes and like the range that he has and stuff is like that's not really how I, I mean. I'm excited for it. Don't get me wrong. I really like that play style. It's just it was a surprise to me to kind of see. I don't know if I'm maybe out to lunch on that opinion or whatnot, but that's kind of what I got. Do you think that kind of lends itself to just the MK11 meta overall to where it's just not going to be... It's obviously not going to have the high focus on rushdown that MKX did. I'm sure there'll be some rushdown, and he's just not the guy that that's going to be. Right, like, uh, Garrus looked like he'd be pretty crazy rushdown. With, like, his command grab and, like, that corner carry on that thing was ridiculous. <laughs> it's also a high, though. That's everyone's big complaint about him. Once people figured out that, the, well, as it stands right now, it's a high, it's just kind of like, oh, okay. All right, I see. So, there, yeah, I guess there's that. Um, but, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you look at Jade, and Jade's kind of, I don't know. She controls that space more, being aggressive i think as opposed to bait and punish where it looks like johnny cage really like he doesn't quite have that that super far range so he kind of wants to outspace you to so he can get to whiff you on or whiff punish you like on. like block pressure and then wait for you to make a mistake when you think that it's your turn and then do something about that exactly yeah like like uh, make you overextend and punish you kind of deal because it seems like, so like Scarlet, Cabal, Jade, they all look like really strong in like the mid screen, right? They've got really good normals uh, that kind of secured that space for them to keep you out of their face and they still have options and things like that. But that shadow kick looks really fast and it's a high, but it still looks like a really good whiff. <laughs> oh, big time, man. Yeah, that's like a good range too. I wonder how... Wonder if it's gonna be like hella unsafe, like in MKX and MK9. Uh, I guess be, right? it'd be too too good otherwise. I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It, I, it I, covers I, almost the full screen. <laughs> like that's his counter zoning tool. It, it seems <laughs> like. I mean, you find your opening, and that's how. You, I mean, you can close the space just like that. Who knows what the recovery is gonna be? And yeah, all I that mean. Stuff. It's, it's hard to speculate on all this stuff because, yeah, frame data is just such a huge part of it, right? And you know they're already making uh, already making changes. Like, we saw that uh, <clears throat> Baraka's projectile is now a high instead of a mid. Yep. We saw on the trailer. So, I mean... Which is fine by me. Like, the only projectile I can think of that deserves to be a mid is, like, Kotalkan's disc because it's so fucking slow. Right. Like, that makes sense to me. True. Because if you can just react to it, then you, you know, should be able to. You should be mid. I mean, you can low profile it like a lot of well, an MKX anyway, right? So down fours will go underneath it. 
uh, a lot of down floor as well, and things that traditionally low profile slides, ball rolls, things like that will go underneath it. Yeah, that's uh, I don't know. <clears throat> It'll be interesting to see. I was, uh, was it last time we were we were together, or was it? I think it was last night, maybe. Um, somebody was talking to me about how they thought that like they intentionally used an old version of um, MK11 at the reveal to test the community response to some things that they were trying, uh, like the Amplify, for example, or like things like uh, Baraka's projectile. Right, uh, it could be. The reveal was in February, right? January. Or yeah. January, right. Okay, so the reveal was in January. Everything I've heard about that build is that it was a build from October. Most of the stuff I heard about it was it was like the last stable build. Right. So they'd made so many changes and things like that. That was the one that they felt the best that wasn't going to crash or have, like, really dumb broken shit in it. But they still hadn't kind of tuned, like, just the best that they kind of had at that point And had, they had tested it for those couple months just to make sure that it was going to be, you know, a presentable product. At right. The reveal. But it doesn't surprise me at all that, you know, some of the more philosophical things, the changes to Amplify and mid-projectiles and... You know things like that. So, does that segue us into the uh, <laughs> the, the amplify? Yes, there we go. Kind of a big deal. Yeah, well, everyone has such a strong opinion on it that it's really I don't know. It interests me how uh, mm -hmm. what people's thoughts on it are and stuff. Because I personally liked the idea of like adding a little bit more of character loyalty reward to like, mm. and then I honestly don't think it would be that hard. Um, just to learn your how to amplify your character's moves, but at the same token, I get that like one percent of people that buy the game do it competitively, and ninety nine percent are casual who just yeah. mash with their friends and maybe play the game for two weeks and leave it. So it's I don't know. It's it would be nice if they had like um, a competitive mode where the amplify was in that state, and then like a maybe like a non competitive mode where it's not. Kind of like the like easy fatalities thing. The one button thing, but it oh, wasn't yeah. tournament or competitive ranked or something like that. But yeah, that's that's kind of how I wish that they had handled it. But uh, the NRS business model seems to be like exactly what we've seen: the two-year cycles of games or whatever. They care about selling like it's like making a movie or something like that. As long as it does well on opening weekend, who gives a shit about like anything else, yeah. right? As yeah. long as they can sell those units right out the door to all the people that are gonna you know drop the sixty <laughs> bucks on it and play it for a couple weeks. Maybe keep it around for a party or, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. something like that. But those aren't the people that are trying to keep it alive. Those aren't yeah. the people that are trying to extend it and the people that are bringing it. And like, especially in this day and age to where they're actually getting to be like really legitimate tournament circuits with a lot of money on the line and a lot more interest. I think just fighting games in general, uh, they have a lot of interest right now from just the gaming community as a whole. The genre is more popular than it's ever been, and we've got more fighting games to choose from than we've ever had before. And that, and that being said, that means that NRS games are under, you know, bigger eyes, uh, sponsors and stuff like that, people who run these events, and yeah. thousands of people watching who maybe have never seen a fighting game tournament before. So they certainly don't want their games to look bad in right. those instances. But back to the well. So I've got a couple thoughts about this even more. So the Jade Combat Cast. Did you see how much even 16-bit the guy that does this all day long, right? You see how he goes through these menus and he lives inside this game. It's what he does for a living. And you saw how much he struggled trying to do an amplified version of like one of those moves. He had to try it like three or four times. To get right. It. Granted, it may not be something he's specifically testing a character that he just had to get like maybe a little savvy with for the presentation of that, but. That might be kind of an example of like, uh, maybe this is unnecessarily difficult. It doesn't matter to me either way. Like, I've always thought about it when they first introduced I think there could the be idea. Other My first thought when they introduced the idea was, if you've ever played like Ravenous Melina, it's like extending her grabs, right? You have the additional inputs to make it keep going and do its additional sorts of things. So I just kind of approached it that way. Right. But if they, it is just one button now, it's exactly the same as it's been for the last two games so okay so nothing's really changed in that aspect Except anyways. it's not the block button anymore and anybody that plays like Shinnok and has tried to block after being negative a billion on a shoulder charge and accidentally meter burns it 
because it's the same <laughs> fucking button to block as it is to <clears throat> burn. Yeah, uh, I, that's happened to me with uh, with Quan before because he can delay his rune. Yes. Yep. Then, exactly. So same idea. So it sounds like they changed it to the uh, the interactable button, the R one. Hmm. So I don't know. We'll see how that goes. I guess. I mean, who knows what other gameplay stuff they'll uh, they'll yeah. kind of implement, right? So. Oh, Mr. Aquaman hosted us. Thanks, man. It's great. Like I've got, like I've gotten mixed feelings on it because I definitely understand the angle that uh, Dink's going with that. You know, learning, you know, rewarding character loyalty because you know how to execute the moves. You know, to do that shit. Because you have more time invested and stuff like that. Right? Yeah, but it, but if it is something where it it is difficult in itself to pull off consistently but but i think there could be a change in that because you know even in mkx where you know you're pressing the block like to meter burn like i feel in mkx and and dink was a witness to this it was more difficult for me to meter burn in that game <laughs> than it was in injustice 2 so well, it could have been something where they could have just changed the timing on the active frames for it or whatever well they are doing that now so it's going to be more like injustice to where in Mortal Kombat you have to hit the meter burn at the same time that you're doing the move and now except for like a few exceptions like the couple that we just talked about, Shinnok and Quan Chi. But now you do it afterwards. There's a window after your special comes out, you have a window of opportunity to press that button now to amplify it. Yeah. Which which is interesting. I mean it, I, they were messing around with something at the at the reveal and they said they weren't sure if it was gonna stick or something like that, but it was like making that window bigger. Like so, it's easier for some people. I really don't see that being a competitive setting at all. I really don't like it in general, um, but <clears throat> I don't know. It's I don't know how like because you can change like the sensitivity and stuff in FPS games, and I honestly, not being competitive, don't know how that changes the game. Oh, but it, it, yeah, it can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I, I don't know how they deal with that in tournament, but that's the first thing I thought of like that kind of comparison. That uh, you know, I would if you could customize how easy or hard. Your your moves are to execute. You know, it's... Well, I heard there was going to be like a buffer window that was going to be small, medium, or large that would kind of give you that sort of almost leeway just based on how your how your mechanics work as a person, your your hand eye coordination and what feels most comfortable to you, right? Sort of thing. Makes sense. But I don't think it necessarily makes one easy. I think it's more of a preference. It doesn't really necessarily make it easier because it could actually fuck up other people and make it harder. Uh, something that could be easier for somebody else. I think it's relative. but Depends on the person kind of deal. Right. Makes sense. Interesting change, though. It's, it's, it's both interesting and scary to me that they're making changes that big this close to release. Having said yeah. that, I don't know if like this was a change that was made like long ago and maybe they just decided to show it off at this point or let us know about it i don't know you never know in the last couple of weeks because two combat casts or the jade combat cast that was still the unique ampli amplifiers and just the one this week which was two weeks later because they had the mobile one in right. between they had changed it but who knows what version of what build or whatever it is that they're using but they said they based it on community feedback yeah, this is and another thing that worries of... me too. Is that sometimes I like I hate it. I greatly dislike. There's a double-edged sword because you want to listen to the community, but at the same time, the community are not game developers. The, like a lot of people don't understand balance in game design, so that's that's why sometimes you shouldn't always listen to the community. So. Well, there's the community yeah. at large, and there's the community that they kind of like people that would maybe they would invite to test a game or something like yeah. that. Like I saw a lot of people that we see in pro circuits, you know, top eight people that place in top eights, people that take tournaments that hated the idea of mm. amplification and they just wanted it back. They just thought it was one of those needless changes, like yeah. just an arbitrary making it more complicated just to make it more complicated. I like the idea of, like I said, it doesn't matter to me either way. Right. But I think yeah. a lot of the people that liked it thought that it would kind of detract people from uh, picking up, multiple characters so enforce some sort of character loyalty which is a point that you just brought up dink like not too long ago i know the example like other games you watch like tekken or you watch whatever the 
fuck else, right? People have like one, two, maybe three characters. But how many Forever Kings or, you know, people that play six, seven characters at like a level or what we saw in Injustice with Deadshot and, you know, right. Starfire and all that stuff. People just picking it up like right away. And I don't think that's so much like an execute, like a low execution, but just tools that are too strong in general, no matter what button sequence you need to input to do them. Yeah, good points. Good points. Um, I'm not sure if there's really anything else to say on that topic, unless you guys had anything else you wanted to add. I think we pretty much covered most of it. I think some people are worried that it's just a sign of more homogeny, like how everyone's wake up. Basically, everyone already has two wake up options. For everybody not revealed in the cast, I can tell you what their wake up options are up two and up three, mm -hmm. just like everybody else. You know, things like that, and things just getting a little bit too too catered to people that don't want to get all wrapped up in it or get discouraged by the inputs or some of the, you know, complexities and the investment into a character. But personally, it doesn't I feel, bother me. I feel that was kind of like <clears throat> in just like in uh, Injustice 2 type thing, like the way that everybody has a meter burn back 3 and 4 or 3. Just like a way to make sure that wake-ups are are even because yeah in mkx there are characters with wake-ups that really don't do shit <laughs> and then characters with wake-ups that really make it so you can't do shit so at least in this way everyone has the same 50 50 option of combo you or do a safe get off me move mm -hmm. but at the same but sense still i don't a guess for them right it's still a read yeah so i mean i personally like it but i also i get why people don't so i don't know I'm I'm a fence sitter on this one, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm impartial as well. Like I'm not heartbroken that they changed it, and I'm not mad that they changed it. I, you know, it is gonna be. I just want to play the fucking game, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't really even care. Like I'm just so excited to get my hands on this game. It's hard to play anything else right now. I'll be totally it honest. It really is. Cause it's like I wanna like I wanna play MKX because it just feels like that's what I should be doing. But at the same time, I mean, it's not going to help me at all <laughs> be better at Mortal Kombat 11. Um, just being so neutral based and stuff like that. And I, I still see people referring to it as, as quote, Injustice 3 and blah, blah, blah. And if, I, don't, I wonder if those people have ever played Injustice <laughs> because it does, not, it does not play anything like injustice it just like graphically the way that they're doing like facial scans and stuff which is the technology that they implemented in injustice 2 and have obviously refined because this game looks so much better oh my god 10 times but, better man. so it does kind of like have that man i've been playing a little injustice 2 just to kill some time and it's like the camera is so zoomed out the characters are like little miniature little figures <laughs> like how did i play this for so long this looks like it's fucking Lego Mortal Kombat, if anything else. Uh, <laughs> Lego Mortal, Mortal Kombat, Kombat 11. Yo, I'm waiting for that game. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, and that's, and I think that's one thing why, uh, I don't know, I think people are overreacting to the whole Mortal Kombat 11 thing is because the screen is way smaller and the characters are bigger. So, like, you're not going to get as far away from your opponent as you would in Injustice 2. You're going to be like, there's only so far away you can get. So, to close that gap, I mean, it doesn't take much more than patience. Maintain that spacing, your optimal spacing versus theirs and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like, screw a run button. Freaking playing some ranked yesterday and some guy just runs in the 50-50s me. And I'm like, oh, that's why I hate this mechanic. But <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's frustrating for me as well. That's okay. Just a, just a little while longer. Did you guys sign up for the stress test? I did. Uh, no, I don't think I did that yet. Oh, you definitely I'm should. I'm already stressed out, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they could gate it as well, right? So it could be just the the single wave of invites just into the weekend. But right. I, they're gonna I have look a feeling that if they think that things are going there. well and they want to push it harder, then they're gonna send out you know second, possibly third ways of invites to get people in on Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. That's, I wonder why they chose to do US only. I mean, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a network developer or anything, but I'm assuming that probably has something to do with like it. really specific things. Um, 
and they just don't want distance and that sort of latency that's like geographical to be like a factor. They're more interested in testing. Okay, yeah, that makes that very makes sense. specific things. And as a U.S. company, they choose U.S. Right? It's where their matchmaking servers are going to be. Yeah. So, yeah. That makes that makes a lot of sense. I'm salty about it being in Canada. I mean, I'm sure there are ways I could sign up. I know. Uh, don't whatever. check your ID. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. If they, I mean, See, I should I should have got that damn well, VPN, man. Use, your invite's going to be based on your PSN, and they can tell. So if you have a U.S. copy of the game, uh, oh, I see. U.S. PlayStation ID and all of that stuff, you probably could. I don't know. Quick, go into your settings and change everything. But there is an NDA <laughs> attached to it. No one's going to be streaming that. Oh. oh, really? I didn't know that. The beta weekend, the one for pre-order, uh, will be different, but this one, I don't think they're going to allow anything. The, the language that was in the little sign-up, the registration for it, made it seem like you're not allowed to share any information that you see going into this. Mm, that's very interesting. Totally, right? So, there's just going to be, like, how many people that get in and get to play this and not <laughs> to be able to tell anybody about it? Yeah. <laughs> that's Who interesting. Knows? I didn't know that that was a thing. I don't know if that's what it'll end up being, but a little, like I said, the little disclaimer when you're registered made it sound like you were not going to be allowed to share it. I don't think we'll be seeing people streaming it or anything like that. Well, we'll find out in a couple weeks, I guess. Yeah. When it happens. And then the beta is just a couple weeks after that. Yep. Yeah. Did, did they say how long the beta is for? Is it for a week? Three days. Oh, three days. Oh, okay. Mar or four days? March 28th to the 31st. Interesting. There was that kind of beta dump from that Netherlands distributor that made it seem like the beta was going to go all the way to release, like some of the language yeah. in there, and it caused a lot of like back and forth, like on forums and things like yeah, that. I remember hearing about that. Is it or isn't it? And everyone it? just kind of hopped on that train. Oh, we're going to have beta the whole time, like leading up to it. And then. Anyone that went to pre-register for this stress test uh, saw the information for the other beta test, which pretty explicitly says the 28th to the 31st. Yeah, I got I was so confused because like I got a notification on my PlayStation that said like February 22nd to March 31st, the mm -hmm. MK11 beta, and I was like, what the fuck? I thought it didn't yeah, I think start. It's more like a reminder, like a something to. Keep it in the front of your mind. <clears throat> download it if you haven't already or whatnot. Yeah, I think I, I think I downloaded mine already. I don't even remember. I haven't, I haven't downloaded it yet, but <clears throat> I definitely will get around to it at, at some point. What time does uh, PlayStation allow you to pre-download the uh, the game before release? I think it should already let you, but it, you just can't. You just won't be able to like go in there and play it. Right, I'll have the little timer, the release timer on it. Something like that. That's why I like being on the West Coast, because I get to play it at 9. <laughs> yeah. I guess everybody except for Eastern Time. Is that is that standard for every game that's released? Do we, do that's we even know that? It definitely happened at Soul Calibur, but like when Dead or Alive 6 came out a few days ago, I had like a four-hour timer left. Hmm. By the time that I went to bed, I fit ice feel like it was a midnight release for me yeah. in Mountain Time, which is not in line with that. But for Soul Calibur, I was definitely playing it at 9 p.m. or yeah. at 10 p.m., not midnight. Yeah, yeah I every... picked mine up from GameStop, so I got them at like 9 p.m. Central. Um, hmm. Interesting. Yeah, because apparently GameStop doesn't do like midnight releases anymore. <laughs> so they just they just release it once they close shop for the night. Hmm. That's uh, That's too bad. No one I wants to stay up, but they can sit in their warm home. Yeah, and it's do like, it like yeah, it's like I get my game earlier. download or something. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about that for a second. Do you guys think GameStop is a dead business? Like, do you think it'll still be around in like 15, 20 years? Is it go so the way of blockbuster? Yeah. And CD yeah. Stores and... That's that's a difficult question. Well, like I actually saw um, this video. I forgot who did it it was some channel pretty big budget so it was kind of cringy and hard for me to focus on it but they do mention how GameStop's numbers have not been very good and even a lot of the official letters that they're sending within the company even like phrase like you know the market is changing and 
they really need to find a way to adapt to it, which is one of the reasons why they bought Think Geek and they're widening their range of products to not just video games, but now like consumable, like nerd culture items. Um, yeah, I went into my GameStop last week and like half the store was like merchandise. And yeah. like that store used to be like 100% just filled with all games. And now mm-hmm. it's just like. Yeah, check out yeah. all these pop figures. Like, oh, and if it was okay. one of those those you know small stores with very small real estate, it sucks because <laughs> it's gonna be so cramped in there. Yeah, um, the the store in in my town isn't very big at all, so that's yeah, pretty much what it is. I I still shop from GameStop for multiple reasons. Um, a little bit. I mean, I know GameStop treats their employees like shit, but um, I did used to work there for a while. Um, so there's that. Got any, <laughs> um, got any juicy stories? <laughs> or are they all uh, NDA? <laughs> not too much. I mean, it was pretty chill when I worked there. It was only for like, it was seasonal. It was a seasonal job. I only needed for extra cash. Right. So nothing too crazy happened while I was working there. I even did Black Friday and it was in the morning and it was actually what? pretty chill. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Hmm. But, that's um, uh, That's one of my guilty pleasures is like, you know, uh, if I get really bored, I'll watch some, like, here's what happened when I work at GameStop videos. <laughs> oh, man. Some of them yeah, are pretty I juicy. Crazy tales, sadly. Oh, yeah, I don't bother with stuff like that. Well, I had to buy a new PS4. My old one took a shit, like, last weekend. So I was oh, happy yeah. to have a GameStop just a couple blocks away. Just went. I wanted to have a pro before Mortal Kombat 11 came out anyway. Yeah. But I normally I don't support brick and mortar unless it's, like, local. Mm-hmm. Or I have to, like, if I just want to have it the same day, or I don't trust something like that to be shipped and not stolen off my porch or something like that. Yeah, so that's actually another reason why I still shop at GameStop is because um, when I pre-ordered Monster Hunter World and Dragon Ball Fighters from Amazon, I did not get them on release date, which was supposed to be guaranteed from their ass. Yep. Oh and no. When I, Injustice too. And when I finally got them, the cases were busted open. The, sh- the plastic wrap was open. The cases were just broken into pieces. That's annoying. I feel oh like God. physical media like that is just going to go the way of the CD. The collectors that want to have something tangible are going to still insist on that sort of thing. But I haven't bought a physical game, and I can't even tell you how long. It's just so nice not having to, like, that not only, like, taking up space. I don't really get into that sort of stuff. I don't buy the collector stuff. But just not having to go fetch a disc every time I want to change a fucking game. I just go right back to my PlayStation menu and just load up the next one. Mm-hmm. Like, just for a matter of convenience. It's like the MP3 versus, like, CD making yourself a mixtape on CDR so you don't have to listen to the same album start to finish without, you know, yeah. wait for your five-disc shuffler to do its thing. Or, or, or having to... Like browse through your CD collection before you finally head to your destination in your car. <laughs> right. If you're like me, it's not like I'm putting that back where it goes as soon as I'm done with it. Next thing I know, I've got a pile of yeah. 20 CDs on my coffee table. I've got to like mm-hmm. make an effort to put it all away at least like once a week. It's like another chore or something. Yeah. yeah. And there was a time that that worked, but like we were just saying, like their philosophy sort of like changing because the the times are changing. Like what the MP3 did to the to the CD is kind of like what's happening to video games and stuff now. Yeah, that's very yeah. true. There's mm-hmm. uh, nobody wants the physical copies anymore because you can't you can get them quicker online and they don't come to your house damaged, right? <laughs> yeah. But back to Mortal Kombat. Oh, yes, yeah, back to Mortal cool. Kombat. That is <laughs> that probably boring people with all this stuff. Yeah, right, well, you know, like, oh, they're talking about business models and economic cultures. <laughs> Damn, Republican Ben Shapiro ass motherfuckers. Oh, <laughs> well, well, you think? See, the thing about the GameStop business model is that they really want to do that in modern times. They don't, you know, competition is just going to take over. And that's that's just real capitalism. <laughs> no doubt about it. <laughs> that is... <laughs> you do that way too good, man. That's awesome. <laughs> Okay, back to Mortal Kombat. We're all, we've almost been live for an hour. That's crazy. Time flies, man. Um, <laughs> you're when well, you're cracking open a cold one with the boys. I'm almost done with mine. Oh no, that's why. By the way, what you what you got? I got a Dos Equis. I I like Keystone. You no know? Keystone. Have you heard of that? Do you even have that there? 
<laughs> yeah. Remember, yeah, I but we, we, we call it refrigerated urine around these parts. <laughs> <laughs> well, Yellow I, beer, I'm disappointed in you, sir. Well, I get made fun of every time Keith I drink Stone, Molson. Keith Stone. That's, what, that's how they got me. Because it was like, <laughs> that is brilliant. I want to meet this Keith Stone guy and have a Keystone with him. Man, they, I, I gotta say, like, those were good commercials. I think they I just kind of stopped. Like, I, I just don't watch TV anymore, so. I haven't had cable in freaking forever, man. What's cable? I mean, totally, right? Mainstream the, the, media the, the brainwashing the masses. I love Deadpool, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. So, yeah. something unfortunate happened recently at NRS. Uh, it seems that a... Uh, should we give a spoiler alert? Yes. We start talking about Mass... we give people the opportunity to bail before we start talking about all this. I mean, yeah. there's people that don't know who wrote this by now. True. I mean, people that are actively <laughs> trying to avoid, like, that's a big topic yeah. right now, right? Yeah. People's it's in thumbnails and in their titles, and they can't avoid it even if they want to. It's everywhere, the freaking internet, man. Um, so, yeah, spoiler alert. If you don't want to hear any of this, you can leave now. Um, <clears throat> but anyys so, is that enough time for to for a spoiler alert? Can can we go into it? I have no idea. That's enough of a buffer. They, they have been warned. They had plenty of times to mute the volume or close out their browser tab. It's fine. Yeah. All right. So somebody leaks some screenshots, um, and apparently the whole base roster of Mortal Kombat 11, and that is like I'm super curious what this person's motivation for doing that is like not only are there like huge pro probably legal ramifications for this you're probably going to lose your job the, and the it, rumor mill that i've been paying attention to says that these have been floating around for about a week on a private discord server like somebody that's testing or somebody is doing something around there, which is sharing them with like personal friends. So it'd be like if I worked there and just sent them to you, like, oh, check this out. And then you decide to go post it to Reddit anonymously. I'm sending these links to my Patreons only. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh my god. That's, uh. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, I doubt we'll ever find out what happens or who the actual individual was. It'd be nice if NRS outed them, you know, and just been like, this is who it was. They got fired. Shaming. Yeah. These are the hype killers. <laughs> but at the same time, I mean, at that point, you risk, like, mass harassment to the point of, like... Man. I think they've got way bigger problems. So that Johnny Cage trailer that was exclusive to IGN had, like, 2.2 million views, like, by the end of the next day. They released it at midnight Pacific, and it would just went crazy. So all the money... Who knows what IGN paid NRS or what kind of deal they have to get that exclusive. And now I feel like all of those for future characters are just dead. How much money have they lost because of that? Yeah. How that's many other fair enough are no longer exclusive? How many hundreds of thousands of dollars are just evaporated? That's It's, it's really unfortunate for NRS. And uh, something I was thinking about today that, like, because this is kind of a unique situation to NRS. I mean, I've followed NRS super closely since 2004, and I've never seen something like this happen. They've had those those little leaks and stuff. Sometimes I think that they're just like, they're marketing managers, like, just putting things out there, just to like... Well, like, we had one, the whole roster for feel. Justice 2, and that was somebody that worked on the mobile game, and it was just characters that they saw being introduced in the mobile game, and they leaked that whole thing, and that turned out to be true. Like, yeah. Like, that down to every last character. And there's been like how many roster leaks already? So, um, but I was thinking, what, well, like one move or that they could do, um, as like some kind of um, damage planning or whatever, is uh, to have like maybe one of the DLC characters like completed early. So like mm -hmm. if they if like someone leaked the whole roster, then they just show this. Uh, this trailer for a character that was not in the roster and then all of a sudden bam you're back to who's in the game again right that was yeah. that was like my idea to combat it i mean i couldn't really think I, of anything else but i feel like this goes right back to the GameStop conversation we're just happening it's a different time you cannot just sit on this like starve your community for information 
leading up, like, we're only, like, eight weeks, seven weeks away from release, and we only know what nine of the characters are, or 11 of the characters are. Well, now we know way more than that, but yeah, up until, like, that point, and it's just... It's not the fucking 90s anymore, like the 2000s. This is the information age and shit like that. It's going to happen. You need to find a way to get in front of it. It's not saying it's their fault, but they're right. definitely going to have to make adjustments for the next game. Yeah. Like, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's... I don't know. I don't know what kind of things they have in place right now to, to kind of combat that or or what, but uh, I don't know. It's It's just a really unfortunate situation for... For everyone it involved, is. but I mean, you know, like you said, it's usually, like, you know, it's very big. So yeah. Before we get into the specifics of the characters, because I'm sure we want to talk about the characters, right? Uh, yeah. I want to ask you, as a YouTuber, as a content creator, because there's this kind of like cognitive dissonance, right? Now. I'm, I'm glad you. The faction of people that went crazy with it, like I was just saying, the people that talked about it on YouTube, that kind of like the information's out there, so we may as well discuss it. Then yeah. you've got the other section, or the other sect of, like, YouTubers and stuff where it's, like, it's in their thumbnails, it's in their titles, it's in, like, there's no avoiding it, like, no matter what. It's not even behind, like, a kind of, like, well, here's your opportunity to bow out because this is what I'm going to discuss. And then you've got people that are They're taking, quote-unquote, high road or whatever. People that just don't even want to talk about it out of, like, you know, respect for NRS or whatever. It's kind of a travesty, and I just don't want to even, like, participate in it. So I know that you made a video about it. I'm just wondering, like, what your your thought process is. How you and, feel about it? And I'm really happy you brought this up because um, I saw a tweet today by someone who I won't mention their name because I don't want to bring them, you know, without talking to them into the into the uh, conversation. But they said something to the extent was like, I can't believe YouTubers that were invited to the uh, reveal event would go and do that same kind of thing. It pretty much felt like it was, like, uh, mainly shot at, like, myself, Honeybee, and and that Dynasty guy. Super and all of them. People yeah. Where WB sponsored your trip out there to go see it for the first time. It's like biting the hand that feeds or something. Right. And, I mean, for the VIP ones, maybe that's a little bit different. Cause, I mean, WB didn't pay for anything of mine. I had to go there on you my got own. The, you got the invite, but you had to pay your own way. And all yeah, that. I wasn't a content creator, so, I mean... Maybe I'm somewhat exempt from uh, from something like that. But, I mean, it's one of those things where, like, don't hate the player, hate the game, right? Like, the person you should be mad at should not be the YouTubers. Like, the, people, the person that you should be mad at is the person that leaked the shit to begin with. I mean, it's like, I don't know. It's hard to find, this is such a unique situation that it's hard to find something that I can compare it to. That's really, like, I want to say that it's, like, the, like, um the equivalent of somebody using an infinite in tournament you know wasn't meant to be there but at the same point that's more of an accident than somebody being malicious or whatnot or in, maybe in this case stupid i don't know i've been thinking about it like say an armored truck turns mm -hmm. over an intersection and now there's 20 dollar bills all over the place you're going to be like well that doesn't belong to me or you're going to be like what everybody else is doing and just scrapping it up even if you're not hurting for money you're not hurting for anything else do you do it? Do you fight the compulsion over some sort of, you know, it's, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's tough because, like, if you don't talk about it, somebody else will. And especially for a smaller channel, you really need to take what you can get when you're given to it, right? I mean, my video that I made on it has gotten more views in, like, 24 hours than, mo like, 90% of the videos I made over the last month. So the thing is, there's people that obviously want to see it. And, like, looking through the comments, there's, like, 400 or some comments on there right now. And there's maybe two or three that are, like, you know, you shouldn't do this kind of thing. And I even changed the title, actually, too. Because initially I had the characters in the title. And then I saw a comment by someone that I've noticed from my comment section a lot. It was like, hey, you should really change, just take the character names out. Because, you know, that yeah. just to, to try to kind of, you know... That little bit of damage control. Because people, like, people can't even browse YouTube without seeing it, right? Like, yeah, you're exactly. You're trying to get away from it or trying not to, and I don't think you're gonna. I don't think anyone's gonna make it seven weeks. I mean, welcome to the internet, man. It's just right. the day and age, man. It's exactly. just exactly what happens. So, I don't know. I'm of I'm of the opinion that the enemy here isn't the, in the YouTubers that are making the content and talking about it. The enemy is uh, the person that actually leaked it. 
And yeah. this is not clickbait. This isn't like, hey, we saw a really shitty low quality image of who is apparently Scorpion being fatal blowed, so his mask isn't there, and it looks a lot like the guy that played Shang Tsung in the movie, who's already rumored <laughs> to be facial scanned for Shang Tsung in the game. So Shang Tsung confirmed for Mortal Kombat 11? Question mark? So yeah. That, yeah. I mean, it's nothing like that. This it's... is pretty obvious. It's, there's no... I saw a few people at first that were like, mm, is this a really good Photoshop? But like after people thought about it for like even just a few minutes, there's just no way. Yeah. Like and the really unique renders of like... So we have just the one image of Devora and her portrait in that character's lit screen is not from that same image. So for somebody to go in and render that model and then do it 25 more times, you know, right. it just does not seem very feasible. And the it, way that some of these characters look, Jesus, I got two words, and those two words are Noob Saibot. <laughs> oh my God. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that is hella hype. Fuck, Dude, man. He looks like a fucking Death Knight or like a Ring Wraith, like a, a Nazgul. The, the gear that they have for him is like, oh, incredible. Incredible. So maybe, so maybe we should start with Noob Saibot. We're going to be talking about Lost Your Character. Yeah, man. That's who everyone's the most <clears throat> probably anyway. The most, he, one of the most anticipated for sure. Yeah, um, totally. Um, do you think he's going to have like his uh, his shadow assist moves again where he has... Uh, yeah, that's one of his, if you notice in the screenshot, uh, that's one of his equipable gear pieces out of the three. Is shadows. shadows. So not only is he still going to have his shadows, he's going to have a wide variety of them. That'll be, that'll be interesting to see. Because, yeah, of course in MK9 he had the uh, the high and the low uh, projectile, or overhead and low projectile. And then uh, <laughs> he had, like, his throw assists, and then his fatality was, was an assist. So it's... Uh... Yep, not to bit like... So, yeah, he had the... Where Shadow went running across the screen, he had the kind of anti-air kick... Um, sort of thing that was all shadowy stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. It'll be it'll be interesting to see his core move set because I mean I would imagine he'd have the teleport because he's had that in every Mortal Kombat game I believe right since Ultimate MK3 or MK3. I so. so that'll be a that'll be a core one. In MK9 he had that Soul Ball that made it so you couldn't block. So you couldn't block. Yeah. But it didn't. That's gonna be super fun didn't really work properly yeah i, I mean it, it didn't work online and uh so it'll be interesting if they just kind of decide to to cut that out or what but i don't know like when i think of noob cybot really the only thing i think about is the teleport as far as his core moveset goes outside of the shadows i think about his his weird creepy little laugh that they <laughs> kind of gave to sub-zero in mkx that oh, 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 you know yeah. sort of thing yeah. yeah. It'll be cool if he's actually got dialogue, his intros and things like that. Like, Well, there's a lot of lore behind man. him, right? It's so, like the original Sub-Zero, so I mean... Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, Bihan. Bihan, yeah, Bihan. I'd like to see some intros with him and... Uh... Scorpion? <clears throat> yeah, well, so, that would, I didn't think of that. Actually, I was going to say him I and Sub-Zero, but... Yeah, because yeah, they were Scorpion's supposed to the one that killed him. So I read an interesting hypothesis because, so this is going to be talking about another character that was revealed, which is Frost. And main roster going to be implemented in the story, and maybe she's going to somehow be chilling with Noob Saibot instead of Sub-Zero. You know, Sub-Zero has been like the ULAC discipline sort of thing. Yeah, so she'll right. find maybe she's like just like, medical. fuck it, and goes, you know, she's hanging out with the OG Sub-Zero or something. Yeah, well... We know by his inclusion in the game that they didn't, uh, they didn't um, take out uh, the canon of Scorpion killing Sub Zero. But they also need Quan Chi to come back to resurrect him, right? No, that's already happened. Well, like, oh, it, oh, like if they're going, if they're jumping into the Solnado. Yeah. Well, who knows what happened after that? Yeah, that's or true. if the because Baraka also died in the MKX story and all that stuff, and here he is. That's we've true. Had dialogue of like Jade saying, "In the future, I'm dead." Or right, so they could just like, like appear at like different times where they were alive, and like they still ended up dying anyway. It's, I don't know. The whole time travel thing is just makes everything so convoluted. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like an all access pass. We get to do whatever the fuck we want despite what we've said in the past because time travel or because time manipulation or yeah. you know glitches in the matrix or whatever so yeah. it's a way for them to kind of bring back characters that they've killed off which was you know 80 percent of the roster in mk9 yeah that pretty much Sindel sequence which is crazy that she apparently is not in the game but with like yeah, that's that a big bummer for me yeah i know you were really excited for her for i'm really her. hoping that she'll make dlc like, that was kind of... Ed Boon seemed really adamant. Really, really adamant when they were, like, on their, I think, Fighter Pack 2 or Fighter Pack 3. Mm -hmm. No, it was Fighter Pack 1, because he was talking about Red Hood and Starfire specifically. Two of the most requested characters for Injustice 2, like, when they were in development, and they wanted to put them in the game, but they had no place in the story. So they were, like, no-brainers for DLC. Right. They wanted to give the fans what they wanted, give them the characters that they were requesting. And people are going to kind of blow me up probably because they think <laughs> their requested character isn't in the roster. But we're talking about things that have been in development for years, like years before we even heard that the game was actually like really a thing. They're already thinking about this sort of stuff. Um, <clears throat> that's not like a last minute, like right now, they're like, oh, fuck, everyone wants, you know, Fujin. And we didn't think of that. So let's just start yeah. working on them right now. You know, maybe for like way late DLC or something like that. But yeah, um, so hopefully she falls into that. Her Serena, uh, uh, Fujin for sure has got to be in. Like I've seen more people like upset at the actual base roster than like excited dude, about I was it. Playing MK4 at like a arcade bar last night. I saw that you ran into Pick of the Hut. Yeah, Fujin fucking sucked in that game. Oh my god. Like, we I, were both I, like, what is with this character? This is awful. People, people, people want to give Why him justice. Why do people like this guy? I mean, later in the 3D stuff, sure, right? But yeah. for the later 3D console games and stuff. But man, MK4, what a wretched fucking character. Oh my god. He's, he so sucked in... What a wretched fucking game. Right. Yeah, the game, <laughs> kind of overall. He sucked yeah. in uh, Mortal All Kombat Armageddon, too. He was still particularly bad, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I never really cared for him as a character. I never saw the hype around him, but uh, but yeah, Pig of the Hut just happened to randomly be in town for like a game because he works for ESPN. I want to say. Yeah, he's one of the sports he works companies. Part of the production team or whatever, and so covering like a, I guess there's a new minor league football league, and Vice City has a team. And I didn't even know about it. Really? I just saw posting that he was in town. He was going to be there. I was like, oh shit. So we just That's met cool. up and had a beer and talked some Mortal Kombat for a couple hours and. That arcade looks freaking dope, though, man. I know, right? Sounds like a chill night. Just a random night with Pig of the Hut. Just a random night with a perfect stranger. <laughs> it's Those weird. are the best like, ones. Just the scene did, like that. did you, like, like, whisper in his ear, like, I've seen that video. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sweet nothings. Yeah. I think that's a testament to the community, right? Like, two people have never even fucking spoken a word to each other, didn't even know who I was before that day, and it's still just like, we have that common ground. Plenty of stuff to talk about. Yeah, it brings people together, right? Yep. Pretty crazy. Um, I do want to talk about the uh, the rest of the cast, but we're our our hour is up here on Twitch. Yeah. So it might, it might be kind of hard to like fit everything. Yeah, into but, uh, one little thing. So. Yeah. Um, if you're on the Patreon, you get to uh, check out the next hour or so. Sometimes we ramble and go on longer. I uh, usually. Uh, Post Any that within a day or so. Before we go? Character requests. I don't think anyone's even paying attention. I'm looking at the chat and everyone's just kind of talking to themselves about I see, I see eating ass and uh, Dr. Love eating calling ass. me out. <laughs> That's quality MKX conversation. Absolutely. Quality MKX. See, the other day I was practicing my 50 50 vortex and then just started eating ass. I wasn't <laughs> expecting that mix up, but hey, what you gonna do? It just, it just happens. Well, all right, guys. Well, thanks for uh, tuning into the stream, and uh, that's gonna be it for now. Thanks for listening. Blah blah blah. Subscribe because we make videos every single day. You know, you know the drill. Hashtag Bonehawks. Hashtag Big Dink Energy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, hey, <laughs> gonna make it trend. So it's gonna start a new trend. When did that start? <laughs> Molu really have almost twenty thousand respect. Jesus Christ. That's a lot of respect. More respect than I got. Yeah. Anyways, guys. More respect for Aretha Franklin. Urethra Franklin? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you found out! <laughs>
<laughs> oh shit. You're like, why did no one correct me? <laughs> it's been so I, long. I literally thought you were just joking. <laughs> Well, I always thought it was weird, and I was like, that's, okay, maybe it means something a different language that I'm not, what like... Weird name. Yeah. Named their child. <laughs> but I've never heard of anyone named Aretha either, so, I mean, I don't know. I can see why. I... Anyways, I'm going to end the Twitch stream now. See you later, guys.